so with the roof stuff sorted up there, I figured I'm gonna move inside and get some stuff done in here. Now I was trying to think what's gonna be the most logical thing to do next. We've got some insulation to fit in the wall. I've got some chipboard to fit in the corner behind you. And I've got the partition wall to build for the toilet and the door. Now I'm thinking if I do the partition wall, first of all, then I can just bring in the insulation and the chipboard and do it all in one go to finish it off. So I'm gonna do that. That means then laying out where the wall's gonna be. And I think then we can just, just making it up, fitting it, and then bolting these bloody cables in place and insulation and all that malarkey. One of the things I'm concerned with is what I'm gonna do with the door. The door over there is it's going to be quite wide to open inside, but it's going to be all equally difficult to open it outwards. Because if I open it outwards, then that could have an impact on on the area that that Claire will have. So what I think I might do, what I think I might do is I might move the wall further along here to allow it to open fully. If the wall is too far back, that door is going to interfere and on the toilet. So that's where I'm at at the moment. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to, I'm going to trial it out with a bit of um, pretend door and see various angles and step in and uh, see what will work and what won't. Hmm. Right, so I've done, I've done some quality diagrams. Yay, there we go. This, this, this is gonna be the wall. So we've got a 600 piece here. The reason I'm going for 600, it's the exact size of one board. So I don't have to cut, I can put one board either side straight away, piece of simpleness. This one is gonna be 320. So it's gonna have the doorway in here. What else? Oh yeah, the beams on the bottom which are 45 millimeters high, same on the top, 45 millimeters high, which means that the whole height, the 2195 minus 45 and 45 is, these heights are gonna be 214 of those. Then I'm gonna have a couple of these cross beams. I'm gonna to have to do something along here as well. So, time to get to the saw and get cutting. Come on. All of my wood, well not all of it, a lot of it is hidden under here, just to try and keep the weather off. I'm getting down these piles now, for sure, for sure. I don't think I'm going to run out, but... Because I do have a fair, fair bit. And with those shorter sizes that I've got to cut, I can use some of these offcuts. I've got a load of these. And I'll try and reuse those as much as possible. Save cutting into the longer lengths. It's kind of like the ethos of this, the whole shed really where i've got as much material as possible that i've kept for well in some cases four or five years it's really good to finally be getting through it and actually getting to use it i think i'm going to do first up is cut the smaller pieces work up in scale cut out the small ones then go up to the larger ones until i get to the largest ones that way i can work through the off cuts hopefully cut into less new wood. Big wood, long wood. Right, I'm gonna use the sunnies, that'll work. 600 millimeters. That's the badger, bob on. or four internal carcass framing bits to make the partitions. We get a lot of that. There's uh, 
a naval air base down not too far from us so they tend to fly over us a lot. Let's get building this wall today. I'm wondering if I build it in sections or try, 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 try. Well, what I might do, thinking about it, this piece is gonna be, this is gonna be the top beam and I might just plonk that in position and then I can work out the verticals from that. I think that will be, that will be the way to go. Now, clever bobs, how are you gonna fix it up? I think I need screws. Yeah, I'll use a couple of screws, hold them in place. And then, then it'll be fabulous. And it's a couple of these wonderful beasties. They're very long and very strong. Sounds like an Andrex advert. Now the beauty of these, these screws is that they come with their own little dubiferkin thingy in a bag. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is going to be a bit, bit more better than the one I've been using, what I've got, the DeWalt ones. Because they've been, um, they've been stripping. And, and I don't mean in a good way, none of that, no, 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 no. as in the heads. It's completely taking the heads off of the buggers. So hopefully, hopefully, this will do the job properly. So we're gonna be sort of, we're gonna be sort of there, I'm thinking. Looks jolly lovely, jolly lovely. It's about right. So let's measure them out and see. One thing looking about right, it's got to be bob on. So now I'm gonna measure to the outside edge, wall to the outside edge, 80, bob on. Super! 80 is a good number. What I need to do now is work out roughly where the screw is gonna go, and then pop that in position before offering him up. So I have a lovely, lovely marker of this knot in the wood. And that, if I go through at that point, I'll be able to hit this beam Oh yes, this uh, drill bit is a really good fit. As you'd expect, as it came with the actual screws. Oh, crikey, I tell you what, they're sharp. That's a bloody good job I got those leather gloves on. Otherwise that would have been really uncomfortable. I'm just gonna put this one in place, push this beam right against the wall. And that way I've still got some leverage I can spin it so that when I've got my measurements correct on the inside edge of this particular piece, I can then match up at the other end. Ba -ba 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 -bum. 80. There. Super de duper. There we go. I'm just gonna have another check, make sure that I've got this one right because it was a bit difficult balancing, holding it in place and measuring it. Oh my goodness me. Billy Bolly Bob Bob. There we go. So it's fixed. That's how we've done. Right, let's build down from there. Ah, did, did, yeah. So I've been in, I've been in here. Came in yesterday. I did a bit. I did a bit of, I did a bit too quickly, I'll be honest. I was rushing around trying to get stuff as much as I could done before going out in the St. Ives. Went out St. Ives, lovely by the way, um, it was beautiful. But I did rush cutting the pillars for the walls. I was supposed to cut two 105 millimetres. So that's two metres, ten and a half centimetres for each of the pillars. So these are the uprights that form the framing of the internal wall. That are gonna go this bit up there to down there, right? I measured once, ran outside and cut 2005, 2005 millimeters, resulting in a 10 centimeter overcut. So, I've got to figure a way of finding the extra to be able to fit these in place properly. 
So I don't think it's I don't think all is completely lost, but it, it it's one of those it, it's it's one of those lessons where I've I've just rushed I've gone at it too fast I've done it too quickly I haven't concentrated enough and uh, and pay the price. I've decided I'm going to take this this timber and shift it over a little bit because I think it's going to be easier to just move this over 18 mil which will allow me to fit the chipboard in between this board and that wall than to actually take the board out, cut it, refit it behind the loo because that was, that was a pain in the ass getting <laughs> behind the soil. It was really fiddly. So I think I'm going to do that versus knocking that out in two screws. I think I'm knocking that out in two screws. That sounds like a damn sight easier to me. So let's do that. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. And then you can do some proper building. Proper building. Like I'm a proper builder. That will be the day. Good out. Now we just do the far end. Oh yes, much better. Mas mejor. With a, with a bit of jiggery pokery, a bit of back and forth, I've ended up moving these out away from the wall a little bit further. So now we've got uh, enough space to be able to fit the chipboard in between the back model, backboard and this new partition wall. I've squared up this piece of timber to this one. Friction fit at the moment, this is the only thing that's screwed in at the moment. So now what I need to do is uh, look to actually fix this in position. Just use one of the short pieces with, a, with a, an additional 10 centimeter piece, wedge those together against the back wall, which will keep it nice and vertical. See if this one will work in here as the end wall. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's as if it, if it was made for it. That's not so bad. This will be the receiver for the door. This timber has a bit of a concave. Um, and it has actually, look at that, it's made that one friction fit come loose. I might switch these over actually. And that's pretty damn good. I think I need to bolt these in position, get the nail gun out and get these, um, get them fixed up. Handy hint, I'll leave the battery out. Same with the gas, leave that out. That way, neither of them seem to have much wastage. So hopefully this will fire up. That's been sat there for days. That's a Brucey bonus. Gosh, you forget how jolly loud that actually is. I think, I think I'll save my hearing. It's got him good and strong. I like that. I like that. Cut the fall plate to the right length to give a 76 gap for the door. And then we can do the front plate. It's all coming on. So I'm gonna pop some of the longer brads into the nail gun and try it and do just that. Super. Thank goodness I cut some short pieces. It's all part of the plan, all part of the plan. The longer nails, which are back in the garage. So I've got to go and find those. That these ones, these ones are going to be long enough to go, in effect, through the frame into the, um, the frame that's behind that chipboard. I might be being a bit optimistic with that, but we'll give it a go. We'll give it a go and see. I am forever optimistic. So that is the position, the vertical for the front facing wall. What I have got to do is I've got to put in place a base plate and one vertical because this is 83. This is 83 centimeters and the boards are the um, chip boards are 60 centimeters. So we need to put up a, an upright to be able to fix to that. Here's pot ring. Well, that's not going to do, is it? It's nowhere near long enough. That's not going to do. That's nowhere near long enough. Oh, do you know what, Richie Roo? You might, you might be struggling. Unless there's some under there. Oh, two pieces. That is jolly, jolly fortuitous. Panic over. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't panicking. Oh, I got, got it all under control. Honest gov. This plate is um, 80, 81.8. 818 millimeters there, 82 up there. So why does that appear? 
That should not be vertical then. Surely, surely that should be unvertical. But that's bob on. So that one must be unvertical. Ah, framing timbers. So this one, this one is bob on, but that one, that one is a little bit skew if. You know, I was saying earlier about, or I said before about the, the wibbly wobbly timber, and you have to make adjustments as you go. Well, this is going to be one of those adjustments. So, 818. Let's find a piece of timber that's 818. And I think it's going to be one of our uprights that we need to cut down. That would make sense. That's 82. Do you know what? I'm going to start at 82. I can always cut more off. I can't put it back on again. So let's this time I've got a proper little, a new little speed square, which I did a Timu buy and then found that it's American because it's only got inches. It wants to work. So from the end then, 80, 82. Bob on at this end because this is going to be one of those that you know you can't really hide yeah this piece is pretty pretty much going to be visible so it's got to be it's got to be really tidy yep i'm happy with that right okay let's get him uh let's get him bolted one more upright and then we're done then we can start putting up the chipboard right last measurement where's me where's me rule there it is. I use them. I have used all of my, my offcuts. That means I'm going to end up with one length of framing timber over. Looks like I can build some shelves after all. Okay, so this area, 2105, exactly. Which is great because that means this top piece is actually all bob on level because it was 2105 for the last one. And I cut. Awesome. Right, let's have this, uh, have this momentous occasion of the last piece of framing timber that I'm gonna have to cut. Let's get that cut and yeah. I'm, I'm pretty happy with what, uh, what I've got done today. That's sorted, so the frame now for the partition wall all in place, that's all done and dusted. Cables are in place, um, overrun all the way through from the ceiling down. Bit of an intervention from Clarabelle, she's uh, suggested that she didn't want the socket down on this wall because it sticks out too much. So she wanted it rerouted over to that wall. So that's what I've done now, I've split it up. So I've got the, the ring main for the sockets going over the door and into that section of the wall. And then I put some sockets down on the bottom. So the next section will be to get some chipboard out, get all that cut up and start then panelling out and insulating. So yeah, man, it's coming on. So, it's going to be difficult to get in this side. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pull the wires back in through the other side, cut them back, strip them, and push them back through stripped. In fact, let's set my socket up ready. We're ready to go now. So this is going to be the earth with a little E. This is the neutral, so the blues, and then the lives will go into that one. So now just get the, the wires splayed in that sort of general direction. Look at these bad boys length of those. See down here, you see these ears, like ears, they hold on the back, hold this socket onto the chipboard. There we go, you started. So these, these tangs, what they do is they press on the back of the chipboard and as I tighten them, they'll pull the socket to the wall by pushing that up to the wall. And there we have it. One socket in position. Hopefully we don't go bang. There we go. Socket's alive. Let's flick him on. Yay, look at that, yay. <laughs> Sorted. Ah, we have power. The last of the electrics is going to be this light here. There we go. That one here. I haven't yet cut or anything. And that's going to be the switch for it. But I've got to get a roof panel in place first. So if I'm going to get some roof paneling, I'm going to need to get some more chipboard to finish off the exterior of the wall. 
get a switch as well while I'm out. Jobs are good. So I think I'll go and do that. And then I can finish off the cladding of the toilet. Then I've got the insulation around the top there. Have I got enough board to be able to do that? I don't think, I don't think I have, I don't know. I think I'd better get measuring and see how much I need in total. See if I need to buy more than just the one board. So I measured it up and it's eight meters 40 I need. So that's four extra boards, chipboards, chipboard boards, boards, chipboard board boards. And um, they are two meters 40 each. And so yeah, four of those plus the one to go around here. So that's five. If I had a look on the Travis Perkin website, a 1440 each, five of those, that's 50, 70 X VAT. So plus the VAT, I'm looking at about 90, another, ni another 90 quid, another 90 pounds worth of wood. <sighs> right, it's got to be done though. So I'm going to go crack on over there and uh, get myself some more boards. I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to go and get some, some more. <laughs> Ow, ow, ow. Gonna blimey. I don't know if you've seen it, I did the Southwest Coastal Path walk and uh, severely buggered up my knee. And that <coughs> really didn't help. Oh, bloody hell. Here you go. I'm back with five sheets for the full five after all. I reckon that's going to be enough to do the um, finish off the sheeting on the outside and on the inside. That's all good. Right, I'm just going to bring them in. With these boards then, that I've just been bought and bought, the sheets that I've had to pay out sheets and sheets for, about 90 quid, man, 90 quid, 90 quid for it. Eight, five boards and a bloody light switch. It is bonkers, bonkers, bonkers Britain. Um, right, so my, ow, size, my knee really, I'm smacking it earlier and dirty, um, is 323 millimetres. I've just smacked my flipping knee again. Oh, gosh, I hate getting old. There we go, super. Now, it's whizzing down with the, Circular saw. Okay, it's looking good. Next piece we want for this section here. 31, 314 millimeters. Need a bit of sanding on that bit, but it's nice, 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 nice. Pleased with what's uh, what's done today. Get that socket finished. That's a good thing to do. Boxing in done. Just one little piece at the top there to put that in. I'll then bang the door on. Put a roof inside it, and then uh, can fit some lights. And that will be the loo. Dun dun dun. Right, There's loads more to be done though, isn't there? There is. When I think I'm getting close, right, and then I think about all the other things that I've got going on all the other jobs that need to be done. And I just think, oh my goodness, there is, uh, there's, I haven't even started on the outside cladding yet. All the window that's got to go in here for the loo. I hope I can get that done before, uh, before, before Claire moves in. <laughs> right, anyway, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Rich and this is It's Adventure. Don't forget, click on that subscribe button. And if you found any of this useful, do give us a like, it really helps the algorithms. If you've got any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.